Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk. 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 All right. Yeah. Lots of tech talk. Uh, it, again, if you have a question, if you're watching us live and you're smart to watch us live, because then you can ask your question and we will answer that question. Anything to do with your home voiceover studio, throw it in the chat room. And Jeff, aside from saying tech talk, will also write down that question and give it to us so we can answer it in the way that George and I always do, which is the correct way. Anyway, it's time for voiceover <laughs> body shop tech talk right now. Voiceover body shop tech talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. Just to make things straight, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Uh, Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Tech Talk. All right. It's Tech Talk number 111. We've been doing this a long time. Therefore, we know everything. Well, at least we think we do. We know everything up until this moment. And yes, but we haven't forgotten anything. We have no. We did. listen. <laughs> I've probably forgotten more than some people actually know. But that's oh, the great thing boy. about having done this for so many years. Mm. You know, when we started, we knew what we were doing, and then we learned more because now we're the experts. Because we were already the experts. And now we know more stuff than you could ever know about your home voiceover studio. And we have forgotten more stuff than you could ever know about Yeah, it's always stuff. like somebody gives us something like, why does it sound like this? What could it be? What could it be? And you go through this list of things and it's like, oh, that's what it is. Try that. Oh, yeah, that fixed it. It makes you feel good when that happens. It does. You know, because people think that you're brilliant. It's like, well, we've only seen this 20 times before. We just have to remember that's what it was. You know, turn your mic around. It's not brilliance, <laughs> it's experience. Exactly. Experience, experience pays. And if you want to have a great home voiceover studio, one, I would suggest don't ask in social media, what's the best way to do this or the best way to do that? What mic should I buy? All this stuff. Instead, Work with people that have the experience, as I was just saying. Uh, We've been doing this for a combined well over 30 years in this really specific niche area of voiceover, which is home voiceover studios. And what is a home voiceover studio? It's whatever you want it to be. And more importantly, what you need it to be, which sometimes isn't exactly what you want it to be, because... It doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing unless you're yeah. building a really nice place. And George, you're a contractor and you, you, you sort of build these, these really beautiful studios for people who can afford really good I, studios. I am <laughs> definitely not a contractor. Okay. You're not. I'm sorry. We are in I, California. You, you help other people with that kind yeah, of stuff. I, I help design these things, but uh, yeah, contracting, oh boy, that's a. Um, no, I mean, yeah, it doesn't have to look like a studio. You you might want what's in frame on your webcam to look acceptable. Like right now, just off frame, this place is an absolute disaster, but you would never know that. Um, but the key thing is like, it has to sound good. So that's what we do. That's what we're into. And I can help you that with that over at georgethe.tech. Um, that's my place on the web for support. And we call ourselves performer friendly techs because... We're here to help performers of all kinds with their technology, voice actors, podcasters, streamers, home musicians who have to kind of 
sort of work their way through a mess of wiring and other things to get what they need recorded and what they need to hear in their headphones, we can help you with all that stuff at georgethe.tech. And Dan, what you doing over there on your your website? We're over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, that place. All sorts of stuff. Uh, I talk about what you really need for voiceover, and I do consults with people. You know, whether you've got equipment or not, I can get you up and running pretty quickly. And you'll realize that doing voiceover from your home is not rocket science. It's There are techniques you have to know. I teach those techniques. I will work with you privately to make sure that you get that done properly. And when I say it's good, it is good. Or it mm -hmm. sounds what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Whistle. So, and there's a way, and we know what that way is, and we know how to achieve that. So if you want to work with me, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, where I also have my specimen collection cup, and for $25, I will analyze your audio and tell you what you need to make it right. And it's not a matter of enhancing it. It's usually a matter of proper recording techniques, which I will be happy to explain to you. Anyway, it's time for George's tech update, whatever it is that he's been browsing the internet with uh, this week. And uh, go ahead and tell us what you got. All right, let's do it. So um, last week I got to do a field trip and it was a lot of fun. Um, I was invited in. Um, well, I kind of invited myself. But <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, welcomed to come up and visit the folks at vocalbooth.com. Um, you know, admittedly, they're a brand that you probably haven't heard us mention all that often on the show. There's a few others that have kind of gotten a lot of the spotlight the last so many years and, you know, good marketers, the new kid on the block, etc. right? But vocalbooth.com has been there a long time. In fact, 26 years in business and continuous operation, creating voiceover booths. And um, it was a really great experience because the reason I was there, and by the way, they're up in Bend, Oregon, and if you like outdoors, holy smoke, Bend, Oregon is incredible. So much great outdoor activity there, mountain climbing, skiing, mountain biking, fishing, etc. But the whole point of why I went there was Vocal Booth has been around a long time. Again, they, they have a consistent track record of, of how the booths are built, the quality and there they have you know something i forgot that they do which is they build the cost of shipping into the prices so when you're shopping on their website everything is priced well as shipped right however they've had this one to me a shortcoming and that has been the acoustics and um you know because i think they just they build a booth that solves the problem for many people but they hadn't inspected it closely for acoustics for voice over actors. And, you know, I just, I've dealt with so many products over the years and I thought, you know, I wonder if they have an interest in improving the, the acoustical sound of their booths. You know, we know they have good isolation. I know they have amazing ventilation, but the acoustics was something that I just was never really that super sold on. So guess what? We did a little collab. I went up there and I did some um, design work with their, their um, basically their production manager who is in charge of making everything there. I mean, he comes up with the actual fabrication process for materials and gets all that stuff together. And he came up with some paneling based on my ideas for materials and size and all that stuff. We tested them out and we came out with some excellent new uh, products. By the time this one airs, you guys might, some of you are watching this live, but by the time this comes out in a week, those products might already be available to purchase. If not on the website, you can email them and find out. But I did some tests and I thought maybe I could take a few, a minute here or so, and I'll play back some samples I recorded in the booth with a TLM 103. I had Freddie who helps run the company over there, I said, hey, do you happen to have a TLM 103? This is the torture test microphone for a booth. And he said, yeah, I actually do have one. So he had brought his mic in and we tested a few others. And I tried it. I tried his 4x4 
vocal booth, which is probably one of the most common sizes in terms of people buying a studio for a home. And I tested it with the TLM-103, totally bone stock, exactly as the booth comes. And this is what that sounded like. And it's not terrible, but let's see if we can hear the difference. Here's the stock format. All right, this is our control. So now we're in the vocal booth, four by four in stock form. This is just the two inch panel on the ceiling, two inch foam on the walls, TLM 103. Um, let's be a little bit more uh, true to life and bring the mic in a little bit closer in my recommended placement, which would be fist to thumb distance off to my right. And let's get into it. One, two. A little bit of bass resonance in there. There's the resonant ring. Hear it ring. Now it really is ringing. <laughs> I got that ring. Yeah. Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> I think Dan does this. Thing. We go into booths, we make sounds, and we listen, right? One, two, one, two, one, so, two, one, two. Yeah, so you hear that, and you can clearly hear the booth's resonances. It has a ring to it, et cetera, et cetera. So then we set up the new materials that we uh, are working on, and this is what it sounded like. All right, here's my favorite torture test mic, TLM-103. For whatever reason, I have it upside down right now. It doesn't really need to be, but it is, and it's in the corner in the same placement as before. But this time now we're using our our um, our foam material panels, not the rock wool. And uh, I'm standing center of the booth. Mike is well, almost a foot away from me right now. So this is what I'm sounding like a foot away. This is what I'm sounding like as I move in towards the microphone, starting to get into a sweeter spot, starting to get in the proximity effect zone. There we are, uh, deep into the proximity effect zone. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, five, four, three, two, one. There, that's as deep as my voice is going to get. <laughs> there you go. So, quite, quite the difference there. Quite the difference, right? Yeah. I mean... The thing that amazed me, amazed me the most, I think, was that it does. It sounded better with the with the treatment added in, a foot a full foot away from the mic, and it sounded when you were close to the mic without the treatment, which was a really cool test. Because I have been telling folks for years, if you want to get your little booth sounding better, get closer to the mic. And yeah, that is a quick fix, but there's no substitute for good treatment. And wow, what a difference it made! And I was really. It was just a really great opportunity to experiment, to have access to materials, the booths, space, time, et cetera, and do tests like this. I did recordings like this with an NT1 because they, we had one of those on hand. And I brought along a shotgun mic, the Rode NTG5, did similar tests with that mic. So it would give us a few mics to compare. Again, the TLM-103, I always call that the torture test. That mic picks up every damn thing. Um, and it was really good. I did, a, uh, I did an interview on, on my other show, The Pro Audio Suite, with Freddie. The two of us standing side by side in the 4x6 booth, just sharing a single TLM-103. So we didn't want to get too friendly. <laughs> so the mic was, you know, it was a solid foot to maybe even foot and a half away from us. So it was not that close. And, um, you know, when that comes out, you guys, I think it'll be out on next week. You'll get to hear what that sounded like. Again surprisingly good so i'm just saying i'm really glad that they were willing to collaborate with me once these products come out you'll see them start appearing on the website you'll be able to there'll be an instant upgrade that you can easily install in the platinum or gold series in the silver series it'll take a little bit more installation effort but they're going to come up with systems for that as well but again on the gold and the platinums it'll be an instant just put it wherever you need it at any height that you need to get the sound uh, that you want. So anyway, that was a cool, a really cool experience and a nice group of guys over there. So the podcast will have out soon. I've also did an interview of the owner of the company, 
and I did an interview. Actually, I did a factory tour where I walked all through the factory showing all the different uh, processes that go into building one of their booths. So that stuff will all be up on George the Tech YouTube one of these days. Um, so kudos to Vocal Booth for reaching out and, I mean, being willing to bring in some from the outside. It yeah, they a haven't. Cool a lot of companies don't regularly consult with us. They don't read. So, no, they, they, they need don't. to know we're here, and that they we don't. know what voice actors do and and how that's done. So yeah, I mean, I have to say, their customer service excellent. They really listen to people's needs, and they do a lot of custom stuff, far more than you would think. They can custom shape and size their booths, almost unlimited. So if you need it really short probably the only game in town let's say you need a booth that's fitting a six and a half foot ceiling basement they can do it they can actually cut their booths down even the doors they make their doors in house they actually 100 percent from the slab they cut all they they have the milling machine to cut the doors it's really cool you'll see the video when it comes out um moving on um a little just a little psa when you get a usb mic or an interface consider where you plug it into your system now, some folks are going to have a hub. Many people have hubs because computers these days, MacBooks especially, have only two or three <laughs> ports, right? So they really have shrunk down the number of ports. So we all have hubs. But I'm going to tell you, it's probably the best bet to try to make sure your mic or your USB interface is plugged directly into the computer, not into a hub. I just had a client. She got a brand new Rode NT1 fifth gen, and she sent me recordings and... I was hearing like this weird high pitched sort of a whistling hissing sound it was weird it was a weird noise and i said can you i, I think something's not going on can you make sure that's plugged directly into the computer when she did that the noise floor changed dramatically all the weird interference hissing whining that was there again it was subtle i could have processed it out but you know that was my job to evaluate the audio and i heard it and when she took that uh, directly into the computer, all the mic was hearing at that point was just the room tone, you know, whatever the sound of her room was, and it made a difference. So that's just a, a tricky one. Um, really make sure your mics are, uh, your interfaces whenever possible are really going directly into the computer. You're gonna get the best possible, uh, probably the least amount of noise as a result. Now, is that always gonna be true for every scenario? No, not necessarily. Um, so, you know, try and test. And if you need a sound check, you can hook me up or you can talk to Dan and get a, a specimen connect collection cup and we'll take a listen. But there you go. Last thing, and there's a little bit of show and tell. Guess who made a new Shure SM7B? It must be the folks at Shure since they're yeah. the ones that make it. <laughs> they sure did. And guess what it's called? The SM7DB. SM7 DB. Hmm. Cute, right? Now, why do you think it's called that? Well, it's got a built-in preamp. <laughs> so, sure was, was uh, I think, extremely late to the game on this. <laughs> but they decided to finally add a internal preamp or booster. Let's call it what it is, a cloud lifter, since Roger Cloud invented the whole cloud lifter design idea, right. they decided to finally integrate one inside an SM7B. This is not the mic we recommend for voiceover. We've said it 10,000 times, but I thought when a mic this venerable, this well-known, this iconic uh, in broadcast has a, an upgrade or it, I don't know if it's an upgrade, but it has a change made to it. I thought it was worth mentioning. So yeah, now you can get the SM7DB which has a two-stage built-in booster or preamp, they're calling it, which gives you 18 decibels or 28 decibels or none. So it has a bypass. So it's basically three different stages of gain um, built into the mic, as well as the original, sh the little presence bump switch and the low cut switch that they have always had on that microphone. So there you go. <laughs> now there's a... A more expensive mic, not good for voiceover available, but <laughs> yeah. since a lot of you folks also do podcasts, and that's a mic that's very popular for podcasts, I just thought it'd be fun to mention it. Yeah. But, you so know, there it, it is. 
Yeah, it, the generally dynamic mics have very low output, so uh, generally they do. And you know, this so they built a preamp into this. You still have to get up to that mic to make it work the way it's supposed to. You know, and it's a broadcast mic. You know, when the signal goes into a transmitter, it is compressed and amplified and all that stuff. So you don't need those things with broadcast. But of course, things aren't really broadcast anymore. Everything's streamed. So yeah, podcasted or streamed, right? Yeah. So your levels have to be pretty good, or people are going to have to crank up their their radios or what their their or their computers or whatever they're listening on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you need to be heard very very clearly. And I, I just think it's funny it came out with that boost thing because the last two years, all the companies that make interfaces for you know that are trying to take a chunk out of that market are adding gain like crazy. The Roadcaster Pro added a ton more gain. The the Focusrite Scarlet now has more gain. Everybody has added more and more gain, mostly because of this one freaking mic. And then they come out and build in the gain booster, like making all that like kind of uh, you know redundant. So anyway, it just was funny that they decided to do that. The only review on their website says, "Why did you add that gigantic word sure on the side of the mic?" <laughs> Because now it doesn't look like the like, original Sure SM7. It looks like a new SM7. And people, I think, are pretty picky about how this microphone looks. So I thought that was funny. Anyway, that's okay. it for me. Dan, you're going to yeah. talk about drop-in editing? Yeah. I mean, who cares what a microphone looks like? Yes, we're going to talk about... here. I, this is something I've been wanting to do, and that is teach a skill. Uh, if you're new to voiceover and you need to know how to edit better, this is one of the basic things you have to know how to do. And it's called a drop in edit. Uh, sometimes some people will say it's, uh, um, what do they call that when with, uh, with, uh, punch, p- punch, a punch, in punch. Edit. Yeah. You know, I'm taking this memory stuff. It's working a little bit better. I can pull those words in when I need them. Well, it's misnomered as a punch in or quick or punch and roll. What it really is is a punch in or a quick punch. Yes. Right. This is not. This is after you have recorded something and say the client comes back to you and says, you didn't pronounce that word right. Or we added something and you've got to do something and put it right in the middle of where you were recording. And how do you do that? Well, I'm going to show you on Twisted Wave how simple this actually is. Uh, I got to share my screen here. Let's see. Uh, share screen. It's right there. Present. Share screen. Share my window. And share. Boom. There it is. Twisted Wave. There Those of is. you who use Twisted Wave, I'm sure you recognize it. Okay, I'm going to read just a little bit of copy here, and then I'm going to show you how to do uh, a drop-in edit. The key to this, if you know, if you're use, if you have to add a word or subtract a word or something, you want to add a little piece of the sentence. Do the edit on a hard consonant. But just just a quick example of how we do this. Okay, here's some weird copy that uh, I'm pretty familiar with. Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on a wide selection of hearing aids and accessories. AARP Hearing Solutions provided by United Healthcare Hearing includes an additional $100 off the AARP member rate on thousands of name brand hearing aids. Okay, so we've got a file here. Perhaps I didn't like the way this sounded here. AARP Hearing Solutions provided by United Healthcare Hearing includes Okay, so, say I want to say that again. AARP Hearing Solutions provided by United Healthcare Hearing includes. One way you can do it is just go to the end of the line and hit record and read it again. AARP Hearing Solutions provided by United Healthcare Hearing includes. All right, simple enough. We know that this is there, AARP hearings, okay. And so you just highlight this, Command C. Then you go to Edit Undo Recording. But we know that this is AARP, and we just highlight that. 
and copy and then paste it. And now it's AARP Hearing Solutions provided by United Healthcare Hearing includes, so we know that it now has total continuity. But here's another trick. Here's something I could do that will show you exactly how to insert on a hard consonant, a P, a T, a D, uh, a Q, a K, something along those lines, not a soft consonant like an S or an F or a W, you know, things like that. So, say I want to replace something here. Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on a wide selection of hearing aids and accessories. So, say I want to say this part again, pricing up. So, again, go over here and read that part again. Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on a wide selection of hearing aids and accessories. But say I want to get it really, really tight, and I like the way I said the beginning of the sentence, which was, Hear better and save with exclusive... Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on... Okay, so here... Hear better and save with exclusive... Okay, so to make a tight edit, Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on... So you go, you copy this section here, pricing... So you know that's the beginning of the P right here. Here, Command-C, copy, and then what you do is you undo the recording, take it out of the timeline, but here, with exclusive pr okay, and we know we copied from pricing to the end of this line, right? And then just paste it, and now... Hear better and save with exclusive pricing on a wide selection of... So you can literally cut in the middle of a word if you are using a hard consonant. And that's how you do that. Anyway, it's time to take a break, and we'll be back with your questions, which you should have submitted by now to Jeff Holman right after these important messages. Don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Have you noticed the specific demands of clients regarding our home VO studios? Are they at a professional level to record for broadcast? And what does that mean? To me, it means it doesn't sound bad. I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones. Some are great, and cheap ones not so great. So how do you choose? It's like standing in the checkout line at the supermarket, deciding which candy or mints you want to buy. So which is right for you? Make it easy on yourself and get the Harlan Hogan Signature Series VO1A, the first and only mic designed for voiceover performers by a voiceover performer. The VO1A faithfully captures deep tones without sounding bassy and has a silky smooth top end that's never harsh. A perfect sound palette for both male and female voiceover performers. Get the complete kit with mic cable and shock mount now. Go to voiceoveressentials.com where you'll see all their great products made just for us voiceover people. Hey, it's time for me to talk about Source Elements, a longtime supporter of the show. Not as long as Harlan, not nearly as long, but a longtime supporter of VOBS. The creators of Source Connect. And Source Connect is a tool that has become... Well, it's completely adopted the use, uh, basically all the projects that were being done on ISDN equipment, like over there, all that ancient ISDN phone line based stuff is long dead and Source Connect has taken over. And the reason is because there was a very long period of time where ISDN was being used on many of the best and biggest kinds of sessions, the kind of work that pays the best, the stuff that's represented by agents, oftentimes union, et cetera. And that stuff was being done on ISDN, and it meant that actors were wearing golden handcuffs. They couldn't leave the studio. They couldn't really go on vacation. They were stuck. Well, there was this new, uh, new kid on the block 15, 16 years ago called Source Connect, which allowed us to do this over the internet. The last forward 15 years, ISDN is dead. ISDN um had to go away for lots of reasons but source connect being a modern software tool that runs on the internet persisted and that is why it is absolutely the heir apparent and is used on so many big projects so if you feel like that's something that's coming 
for you or you're ready to do that big uh, demo for that kind of work that's going to bring you that kind of, uh, kind of clientele, then it's time. Head over to source-elements.com. Get yourself a trial license. Or if you're really serious about it, start your subscription. Because then you'll have the support that comes along with it. And that's what makes it such a strong tool for you as an actor. Their support is fantastic. Head over there, source-elements.com. Tell them we sent you. And we'll be right back up to this next spot right after this. Well, hey there. It's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag-and-drop tool, that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor. Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks. And I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh. Uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw wa WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And Thanks. we are back. Thanks, Bill Farmer. Yeah. I'm trying to get Bill back on the show. It's a funny story here. I wanted to get him back on the show when we were in Atlanta. And I ran into him and his wife uh, at, at in the restaurant there. And I said, you know, I lost your business card. I I want to get you back on. And, you know, of course, she pulls out her, her, her card. And she's a florist, I believe. Uh, and uh, got the card. Wanted to call him. Looked all over the place. Where was his card? <laughs> Finally, cleaning out my drawer, I'm like, oh, there it is. It was, it was actually, I think it was actually in a jacket pocket or something like that. And uh, so hopefully we'll get Bill back on the show. All right. Which would be, which would be good. <laughs> he needs to, she needs to answer my email though. Well, I will find his, we could also find his agent. That, that's true I have the true technology. Too. <laughs> That's good to know. All right. Well, we've got a couple of questions here that are, of course, excellent. And starting with Zachary Chalmers, he says, hey. is Ventura ready for prime time yet? Yes. Yeah, because uh, it's what comes on. It gets what started coming out a year ago. If it's been out a year, it's 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 ready for prime time because there's been a full year now of software support updates bug fixes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm still running Monterey on this machine here, but on my laptop, I am running Ventura. That's what it came with. Didn't have any choice. Um, and uh, it's caused me absolutely no grief now for quite a few months. So yes. Now the next one is Sonoma. That's the one you're not ready to just jump in to start using quite yet. If you're really uh, loving to try new things, if you like to live dangerously, go ahead and install it. I don't know if it's currently shipping or shipping soon, but uh, Sonoma is the next Mac OS. Um, part two from Zach. Is, and I can demonstrate this. Is there a good noise reduction similar to the built-in noise reduction that's available in Adobe Audition that is good in a twisted wave? Well, didn't they now, add one? Okay. Hmm? Didn't they add one of their there own? There is. There is. Allow me to yeah. allow me to show you the, where it is. Let's allow me to elucidate. That's I right. Now, elucidate. We don't have don't don't have to, don't have to worry about the delay here because it's just a quick demonstration of how this all mm -hmm. works. And okay, so here's a file in Twisted Wave. Uh, aside from someone using a limiter on it, you want me to take a pay cut? Okay. So say someone has. A little bit of background noise. How do you get rid of it? In you go to effects and it says learn noise profile. So we don't you see do, the shared menus, unfortunately. Oh, okay. It's just one of those weird things about sharing window. Yeah. But and, you do and, get noise profile, which is 
pretty much exactly the same as Audacity. Right. And so you highlight a little bit of the audio. Mm -hmm. And even though you can't see me doing it, I go to Learn Noise Profile. And now you cover the whole thing. And you go back to Effects and Denoise. And don't go hog hog wild on it. You know, yeah, maybe use a low setting. Yeah, like yeah, I, I've been using twenty five percent, and hit apply, mm -hmm. and it cleans. As you can see, it's pretty clean between between there. So it got rid of a, a low a low tone that was in there. Let's see how that sounds, if you can. Oh sure. You want me to take a pay cut? I'm a valuable member of this team. You know it's so. Yep. It, there's no background noise at all, so. Yeah, like so, all these tools, use them lightly, you know? Yeah. Not too much. Yeah. <laughs> little dabble do, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think people tend to over-process, and that's what destroys audio. Yeah. So use things subtly. But that I, I've used that, uh, that noise reduction in Twisted Wave a couple of times. It works mm -hmm. pretty well. Yeah, yeah, especially if somebody. Much yet. Yeah, well, you know, somebody sends me something and says, I use Twisted Wave. Which is why I ask when you submit something in my specimen collection cup, what computer are you using? Yeah. What software? Because I want to be able to solve the problem using Me that too. particular software. Yeah, and the more provi more you provide us when you get those sound checks and things, the better we can give you. You know, we can give you better advice. You know? Absolutely, we don't want to guess. You know, yeah. it's we ask lots of questions, and that's the key. I learned that from selling life insurance. Ask lots of questions. It's called a fact finder. And with your home studio stuff, ask lots of questions. It's a fact finder for me. It takes us right to where we need to be to find the answer to your problem. Next question, all yours. All right, this one's from Justin Ramos in the YouTube world. Thanks for the AT875R recommendation. That's this microphone right here. Um, this microphone right yeah, we all have seen right it happen around because they're so affordable and work so well that they're just hard to beat for the price. Um, but he wants to know, he's doing a, an interview for a interview for family history, so he needs a second microphone for the guest. Um, what about the Pseudotac 800 or the AT2020? Sounds like he has a hundred dollar price limit on the second mic. Yeah. Guess in here, or maybe one Omni mic. Um, so okay, you can go with one more Omni mic to record multiple people, it just sounds a lot more roomy. So it's gonna sound like you're sitting in an echoey living room and however echoey the living room is, the Omni mic will make it sound even probably more echoey. So it can work, but everybody's gotta be, everybody's gotta be pretty cozy. They need to really kind of come in close and sit very close to that microphone. Um, so it's not a bad idea. Now, because the thing is, if you have two microphones, now you have two microphones to sort out. So if your people are, if your subjects are really close to each other, two condenser mics is more challenging, actually. When they're really close to each other, you're really better off with one um, and sharing it because two mics means twice as much noise, twice as much, um, yeah, well, Dan's gesturing, literally handheld miking, which if you have good technique is a really good idea. Um, but now, you, now you've, if you have two mics, you have twice as many mics to pick up noise, room reverb, crosstalk, which is one microphone that's on this subject, hearing the person way over here as their voice bleeds over, right? There's a lot of tricky things to getting a couple of mics to work well. That is why those low output dynamic mics that are meant to be used kind of like this are so popular for podcasts because you're now eating the microphone and the microphones don't hear as much crosstalk and, and bleed, right? right. So I, what would you get for a second mic? I mean, maybe a 2020, but again, that's a large, that's a wide diaphragm, a wide, what's the word? A large, a wide, a large diaphragm condenser. Yeah, it's, and it's a wide pickup pattern. Right. So if you were to use that mic, maybe try that mic alone and have you and your family member sitting on, not the front and the back, that won't work because the back is a cancels out, but maybe on each side of the microphone, like a 45 degree angle from the microphone. And that could work really, really well. So, or yeah. Find a mic that has an Omni or figure eight pattern. And yes, then you can put, eight. 
put 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 a put a microphone right between you and your subject, and both of you can talk, and the mic will pick it up both ways. I hate to say this, but the Yeti will do that. But there are other microphones that have That's an true. Omnipad. The Yeti will do that. Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. a lot of people bought it to do family histories and stuff. Having been a former social studies teacher, that is a great project. Do a family an, a, an oral history, so you get those stories that grandpa used to tell and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. Good for no, you. No, this is this is one of those cases where the Yeti that has the multi pattern would be a pretty nice choice as an alternative. Um, because easy you can set it on the table between you guys. Just still keep in mind you want to be don't get too far away. It's gonna sound real yeah. reverberant. Um other part two question to this is that he wants a comparison. Good thing Harlan's not listening. He doesn't <laughs> he doesn't like this as much, but that's okay. That's the way, you know, we, we're comparing products and that's what we do. What's the main difference between the Tri Booth and Harlan's Porta Booth? Price, acoustics, size. I appreciate the audio samples on both respective websites. Well, they're good. I mean, that means he's been doing his research. So let me show you real quick. Um, I'll just do a screen share. I've got both booth product pages up side by side. We won't labor the subject but you'll at least see immediately what the differences are and that's the wrong screen hmm. take two Dun, share screen we'll do entire screen screen two there we go there we go so on the left hand side is the Porta Booth pro which is harlan's uh premier product for portable voiceover recording it's a, a roughly 400 dollars unit it folds up into a bag that is carryable like this. That you can carry all sorts of stuff in. Yeah, you can stuff things in there. On the right-hand side is the Tri-Booth, which is a totally different animal because, well, as you can see, it's big enough for us to stand uh, by it. It's, it's much larger. Um, it fits into a duffel. Um, it includes all of the framework pipe and blankets to create a tent completely enclosing you down to your shins, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's a very different concept around creating a portable booth. So depending on which one you use, now I happen to know people that do have both. Andrew Peters, for example, from my podcast, Brodio Suite, he actually does have both and he will use one or the other. Now he likes to take Vespa trips. He will actually take his Porta Booth Pro <laughs> A Vespa trip? Yeah, he... Yeah. It, it takes a little longer, but, you know. He loves Vespa travel, and he will do Vespa trips and travel long distances and actually bring the Porta Booth Pro on the Vespa. Mac, he, uh, we should get a picture of that to send to Harlan. Harlan being a motorcyclist, <laughs> he would love that. Right. You would not probably want to, not that you couldn't, but you probably want to, would not want to try to bring the Tri-Booth, which is almost 50 pounds in the bag, on the back of a Vespa, that would be rather uncomfortable or awkward. <laughs> so if, if you want something that's a little more substantial, that has, you know, ergonomically you stand up, it feels like a booth that you would have at home, has a copy holder, has a light, has a lot of other little accessories, then that's where the tri-booth comes into play. Price-wise, you know, the tri-booth the tri is about four times more, uh, a little less than four times more expensive. So. They're in totally different pricing class. So there you go. That's that's the difference. Of course, I know them extremely well. I've set them up. I helped design the tri-booth. So, you know, they're just horses for courses, guys. Different animals. Well, yeah, different animals for different situations. If you have yeah. the room to set up a tri-booth, that's a good place to do it. If you've, you've only got a desk in a hotel room, you know, a, yeah. a Porta Booth Pro will work very well for that. And there's... Mm -hmm. There's techniques for using both, and that's part yeah. of experience. You have to learn how to use tools. Having tools means nothing unless you know how to use them properly. Right. I think the uh, tri booth is a little bit more idiot proof um, because it is. It does because it does completely surround you. It does a better job of controlling the space all the way around you, um, whereas the the Porta Booth Pro is a little bit less. It doesn't have as much coverage, right? Right. Um, so that's a big difference. So anyway, thanks for asking, and I hope that helps you make a decision. Yeah. Um, okay, so Jeff Holman asks, I assume we should wait to upgrade to the new Mac OS. What about the new iOS for iPhone? 
Note, I don't use iOS for voiceover, though I do use my iPhone to record my self-tape auditions. Oh, yeah. Well, There's I, a new it, iOS that just came out. It, when the iOS comes out, I trust Apple. I must be uh, a moron, but I it's... <laughs> I, I do because, <laughs> you know, it, I wake up and it's like, you know, update. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought I had somewhere to go. I, I it's like the whole to keep, once bitten twice shy thing i think five seven years ago they were they had a few bad bad launches yeah um but my from what i've heard from the from the geek community is that they have gotten much better at vetting their updates before launch so yeah i mean on my phone there it is upgrade to ios 17 i just updated my phone to 16.7 i opted to do the update to the last ios 16 before jumping to ios 17 and it's mainly because it's iOS 17.0. So, you know, there may be a 0.7, 0.7. There might be a 0.1. For sure, there's going to be a 0.1 and a 0.2. So I, I, I like to be a little patient. I try to be. The good thing is that they don't shove the upgrade down your throat as much. They might tell you it's there, but they don't force it on you. In fact, I have my phone set up to not do that. I have, I told, I said, please don't. I don't want to see betas. And I don't want automatic updates. I, I like to have, I'm a little bit more of a control freak. So um, I think it'd be fine, but take it with a grain of salt. I yeah. mean, if your phone's important to you, um, just be a little bit more wary, I think. Um, and then about the new iOS, yeah, that's what we were saying earlier. Wait yeah. to upgrade to the new Mac OS. The new one being Sonoma, which again, I haven't I'm even still, seen it. I, yeah, is, it, is that, a, is that sh as they say, shipping? You it must be. I have do you see not Sonoma? seen any promotion for it or anything. So might still almost... be in beta. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it is the next one and the next one is too new. <laughs> it's still, I still feel like it's too new. So right. I'm, I'm going to wait on, wait on that. Some friends of mine, Dan, you're pretty brave to upgrade. Um, Tim Friedlander, he likes to try things out when they come out. Um, check out the Mac and iOS for VO um, Facebook group that I yeah. made a while ago. That's yeah. a place where, we share things in a safe space about Apple products. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people get uh, very, get, have a very visceral reaction when you say Apple, but that's Some no people do. They bristle. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks, Jeff. Okay. Thanks, thanks for asking. Yeah. Rob Ryder uh, says, you know, Adobe Audition has insert recording, so it won't cover the original recording. That is true. But copy and paste works just as well and just as fast. I mean, I'm, I've gotten so fast at just being able to copy something you know it's there on the it's there on the the copy board and then just pasting it where you want to paste it and you know and i can go through this stuff i do some stuff where there are some very difficult pronunciations and the client is always coming back saying you know you have to use more phlegm oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you say that occupational so, hazard yeah so is that where I, a windscreen is a good idea no not really uh, try to say things a little bit, you know, a little bit more ethnically. Uh, good question here. Greg Cooper on YouTube. Could you clarify what you mean by editing on a consonant, a hard consonant? Mm. I think I said what that means is you can literally edit in the middle of a word. If you have a hard consonant in there, a T, a B, a P, even a D, but soft consonants like S and V and W things, you know, those consonants that sort of draw out a word, but a hard consonant is a hard, is a hard in. You can see it on the waveform that it, it's very sudden. So like what I was trying to do in the, uh, the demonstration earlier is I was trying to cut between the A and the C in accordingly, mm -hmm. because you can do that and make it, absolutely seamless no one would ever know you did that and so that's yeah. a num an another copy and paste thing so you can, might want to record a phrase to lead into where the where the pickup is but just edit from the hard consonant in and you know i've been doing that for years and they're none the wiser that i've done that i love it yeah i, love it. I wanted to do a little uh um i wanted to ch check check um, what Rob said, because I know he's into the tech stuff like us. And I think they may have 
added this mode of recording in Adobe Audition, maybe recently, maybe, I don't know when, but if you right click on the record button itself, you got instant record, punch and roll, and timed record modes, but then below that, there's overwrite, and then there's insert mode. When I choose insert mode, let's see, one, two, one, two. Now that seems to more imitate what Twisted Wave does. Yeah. So and they're actually, it looks like they did add that in, into Audition now. Yeah. The, so the great see. thing about editing on a consonant and using that kind of stuff yeah. is your voice might be different. And if you just use part of a word to fix something, if you didn't say something right, mm -hmm. you, you, you're not going to notice any voice flaws. Like, say, I've had a cold for two weeks. I wish it would go away. <laughs> uh, but it, it, you can, and you can hear it in my voice. So something I recorded two months ago is not going to sound the same. So, you know, that's why a tight edit like that can save you. If you have to do a pickup and your voice is very, very, or the time of day you recorded it, because mm -hmm. boy, my voice sounds a lot different in the morning than it does late in the afternoon. Although it seems to sound like this all the time right now, because I can't seem to kick this thing out of my, my sinuses. Mm. Anyway, this is now Patricia Andre has a great question here because this has been coming up. Oh, by I'll, the way. Yeah, yeah. When I go to software update, guess what the new version of Mac OS available today is mm. Sonoma. Yeah. So if I clicked up great kids list, can I, can I, let's talk for a second. <laughs> if it says that. upgrade, that is not the same as update. <laughs> it is not. When it says upgrade now, that is not an invitation to upgrade. That is the Mac OS saying there's something new to try. Click more info right below that. And then you'll see other updates available. And you'll see that there's new updates available for the OS you already have. For example, I can click other updates available, more updates, and see Mac OS meant Monterey 12.7 is available right so i can still upgrade up date <laughs> i can still update the version i already have so it sounds like she upgraded to sonoma all righty and yes. now she can't record twisted. twisted wave so what should she do <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um honest well okay that's not a right answer the right answer is to uh there's two pain there's the okay I'm sure that Thomas from Sorcell, uh, Th Twisted Wave, sorry, Twisted Wave, yeah, has has been testing Sonoma, right? That's his job, right? He probably does have a fix or an update or a patch for Twisted Wave on Sonoma. So email support at twistedwave.com. Let him know. Check the website. There's probably a patch or a fix that will make it work. Very, very, very likely. If there is not, and you really are are in trouble. You need to have backed up your computer before upgrading, which you use Time Machine and back up your computer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to restore the previous backup of your system and go back to um, Ventura. Those are your options right now. Yep. All right. So, Time to wrap this up. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for all your questions, yes, and we'll be you. right. We'll be right back to wrap this up after these very important messages. Do not go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. 
You know, you have to have a website if you're a voice actor. And if you're just starting out as a voice actor, what do you do? Well, there's a great site you can go to. It's called voiceactor.com. Follow the phone, the, the bouncing fingernail. Uh, voiceactor.com is a template website. You can create your website like that, 20 minutes, because they have a bunch of different templates you can use. You change, of course, you can change the colors and you can add pictures. You can really make it look pretty good really, really fast. The menus are really simple and you go in there and it's free to start out. You can start for free and actually design your website and get it up and on the Internet like that, as opposed to waiting two months while a webmaster figures out all the coding that has to go with it. No coding with this. It's simply templates and getting your information in there, your name, your demos, and most, imp most importantly, your contact information. Because they may love your voice, but if they don't know how to get a hold of you, what's it worth? Go over to voiceactor.com and get your templated voiceover website put together right now. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for, for a living. living. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. All righty. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and asking your questions yeah. because we love to answer them. Uh, next week on this show, I'm not exactly sure who we're going to have, but I know in the end of October, we've got uh, PJ Olchan is going to be joining us. Oh, and, nice. And uh, a few other great voiceover people talking about n he's different a stuff. preeminent audiobooks person. Yes, and he's an ex he's an expert in accents and uh, mm. that sort of thing. So that's really cool. Uh, you got to remember, if you want to work with me on your home voiceover studio, you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. And if you want to work with George, you go over to georgethe.tech. And if you like discounts, slash... VOBS, which is the VOBS landing page where you'll find a coupon code for deals. All righty. And of course, Jeff Holman and his IMDB has to go in there for some reason because he works so hard. O L M A N. Because it's a strike. A, the guy right. needs help. Come on, give him a break. Uh, that's right. Anyway, uh, thanks to our donors of the week. And you can donate to us, to us, to us as well. And help us maintain the amazing technical quality that we have. So thanks to Greg Cooper, Grace Newton, Christopher Epperson, Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Designs, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Adre Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis and Sandra Manwiller. Thank you all for your donations to the show. It all goes to making it all work better because no longer is it every week. It's Apollo 13, which was a long time ago. We've passed that a, a whole lot longer ago. Thank goodness. Uh, yes. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's voice over essentials, voice over extra source elements, VOHeroes.com, voiceactor.com and uh, world voices dot world hyphen voices.org. Uh, mm -hmm. the industry association of freelance voice talent, 
We are doing some cool stuff, so go on over there and check it out and join our organization because it'll help your career. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman. Once again, the IMDB for Jeff Holman is... Dot me slash Jeff Holman. Right. Jeff Holman. J-E-F-F-H-O-L-M-A-N. Right. Okay. Don't say we never did anything for you, Jeff. He <laughs> needs the bump, dude. Clearly... He's not been on enough uh, HBO and other massive hit shows. Oh, always fun to just be watching a show. Hey, look, there's Jeff Holman. It's always fun. Uh, we need to thank, of course, Sue Merlino for getting it done today with directing so. and making us look like a professional TV show. Despite the fact I'm in my garage. And <laughs> it used to be a garage. It's a recording studio. And George is in his apartment, but we look like it's a TV show. We try. Anyway. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech, 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 tech Talk. All right. Have a good week, everybody. You know, <laughs> I got to tell you, it's not easy to get your audio right. But if it sounds good. It is good. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.